Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm very excited to have Frank Anthony with me today. He is, uh, yeah, a fellow podcaster and a guy that I was uh, blessed to meet a couple of weeks ago. He invited me um, onto his show. And now, yeah, I have uh, a couple of topics that I want to discuss with Uh, Frank, because I know he's a very authentic and raw person and he's not shy to, yeah, share stuff that maybe some people might be a little bit too shy around. And um, yeah, we just have a good conversation flow and I wanted my listeners to get to know you a little better. Um, Frank, you started your podcast um, May of 2020. Uh, let me be frank. When I saw that title, I just thought, oh my God, <laughs> this is uh, so cool. And, and you're being very, very frank and it's very, very refreshing show. Um, can you like invite us into your world a little bit? So you are um, pumping out episodes on a regular you have uh, interview guests like from all over the world um how does your life look like right now well first i want to say hello and <laughs> to everyone listening and thank you so much for coming for me being able to come on your show it's an opportunity i've been really excited about it's ever since we connected and you came on to my show so i do want to say thank you for that because this is awesome to be part of the Borealis experience <laughs> but yeah a little bit with me well I guess so my life it looks the best way to put it I guess is organized chaos <laughs> but I mean that in a good way because before it used to just be chaotic and chaos but I decided I needed to I needed to organize some things. I needed to reevaluate certain things in my life, who I was as a human being. So as, you know, as an individual, I can be pretty, I can be very open. I can be pretty out there. I can, you know, I can try to be funny, sarcastic, you know, all different. I also have a big heart and I try to be kind and treat people with respect. So yeah, my life though, it used to be kind of doing like, the typical like, oh, I'm going to, you know, go work a certain job and I don't love the job, but I'm going to go do it just, just because I didn't really realize the freedom that life has for us. Like, I think we, I think we are more free than we like to believe sometimes, or we treat ourselves as not being like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Why not? You know, like it doesn't hurt to try it at least. So now my life is the podcast and working on a book. And it's things that I really, truly love to do compared to, like I said before, going to a job that other people definitely would love to go do. It just wasn't my passion. Mm. So now I'm actually starting last year was the beginning of me being able to not only accept myself as a human being and that I'm not perfect, but yet I can still love myself, but also accepting just my environment and that I can change. If I don't love it, I can change it or I can at least try to change it and work every day on that. And I'm always trying to develop new habits and stuff. But yes, I host a podcast called Let Me Be Frank with Frank Anthony. And I've met tons of wonderful people like yourself, Aurora, <laughs> around the world that just even honestly make me like, you know, Let Me Be Frank makes me an even better individual than I was yesterday after I meet people like you and other people, regardless of where they are in the world, there's always some sort of lesson. There's always some value that I can see in other people. I, what I like with shows like ours is we don't need to, we don't need to, you know, there's so many shows that interview celebrities because a lot of us will care about what celebrities are doing, but I also like to show that, everyday people are also interesting as well. And that there's interesting things about us that we just have to, you know, flip the rock over and discover. 
Mm, very beautiful. And yeah, and with everyday people, it's easier to relate to, right? Like we can relate better to <laughs> the person next door than some Beyonce or um, whoever um, is out there being a celebrity. And yeah, I also want to comment on your uh, 21 little habits that you're doing right now, because I find that very inspiring. You are out there and not only doing your podcast, inviting people and, and letting us learn um, with them together. You, you post on Facebook um, very regularly and it's, it's things that help the individual um, to be more positive and a little more organized. And um, you empower people. You show them, hey, you can do these little tricks and they will lead to a more fulfilled and, and let's say, successful life. Um, I really enjoy uh, following it. Um, when it comes to your podcast, I can sense that you found something that gives you true joy and that you're really passionate about. And you also mentioned that you're pushing through um, like self-doubt at times and, and you um, become a better human, uh, like you make it an intention to, to get better with maybe even every episode that you push out there. And um, this is also very inspiring because I feel a lot of people have so much potential And then they have their self-doubt and criticism creep in. And that's what lets them be stuck in a job that they don't want to be in or in a relationship that is super toxic. Um, so that you share this with us. You know, I, last time we talked, we mentioned Joe Rogan. And when you started out, you went back to his first episode and, and saw that, oh yeah, he was not perfect all along. He, he grew with his mission. And um, this is something we have to learn to accept and, and know that everybody is going through. Um, what I would like to, to talk about with you today is uh, when it comes to relationship and it doesn't have to be romantic relationship only it can be friendship or family um, how did your relationships over time evolve or change um, as soon as you started working on yourself and feeling better with yourself so do you remember a time back then when you were still like not following your passion and not seeing a true purpose for yourself how your relationships were different than they are today? Definitely. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. I've gone through a few different phases in my own life, and I assume a lot of people do. Some people don't, unfortunately. They don't learn different ways that maybe they could communicate better or develop interpersonal relationships better with others. And it's honestly become one of my own actions that I've discovered that I love to analyze and study as well. For me, so at the beginning, years and years ago, I, I don't want to give like any excuse for like, oh, well, because my environment was a certain way, why I ended up being a certain person. But I think as a child, your environment is very important or it does mold you in a certain way. And I love my family. I love them to death. But the communication style and building relationships was quite toxic in the way that we would, you know, I grew, I grew up in an Italian family and you would just kind of yell at each other. You would just yell things back and forth. And I mean, there, there were some awful things you could say to one another, but you wouldn't stop talking to them because they were family. So it was almost like you, in a sense, you could get away with saying, I don't even want to give an example because it would be too, too explicit, but, but you have an idea. Like you could say something so awful to this other family member that if you had said that to someone outside the family, they would not, not only not want to talk to you again or block you. I mean, they could call the police on you for certain things. Like it could be so, yeah, just so terrible or certain actions towards one another that 
was I do love my family and they do, you know, they mean well, of course, we're all, you know, they're all growing, I'm growing, everyone's growing <laughs> and stuff. They've definitely gotten better over time, like myself, but that type of environment I took out of the family environment and I brought it into the real world with other people. And I learned the hard way that that's not, that's not what I should have done, that I needed to, I thought I knew everything, but in reality, there's still a lot I needed to learn. <sighs> so I would use some of those behaviors. I would say such awful things to either best friends or romantic partners or anyone that actually gave me the time of day, which I'm, I'm grateful for them. And then I feel sorry for them <laughs> that they did in that period of my life because I was, yeah, I just, there was a lot I still had to learn. I would do those things and I lost a lot of people by certain things that I would say if I felt like I was hurt by something. Maybe they didn't even mean to hurt me with certain words they said. Maybe I just took it the wrong way. I would need to cut back five times deeper and say something way worse. Mm. And then it, obviously it, that would ignite something. It's not the way to communicate <laughs> with someone. Instead, I could have communicated that, you know, I feel like I feel like you hurt me in a certain way or something. It could have went a different way. So at the beginning, it was a lot of anger. And I think it was a lot of anger and hurt because of growing up what I felt from certain situations, whether they were in school or in my family life or in life in general. Then I started to evolve a little bit and learn about communication and see the importance of communication in a relationship. And the, an issue, though, with that was that during, I can think of, I can definitely think of one relationship specifically where they, they didn't really want to communicate anything. They were almost like a brick wall. And I thought communication was just talking at someone, <laughs> just saying everything you feel and they just have to take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and that wasn't the right way either. I learned, I learned, I can't just keep talking. Well, first of all, I can't talk at someone. You have to communicate. It's like a team. You have to communicate with each other. Yes. A back and forth where you say something, the other person listens. You don't just you don't just wait your turn to say what you want to say. You should actually listen to what that person, whether it's a friend, family member, romantic partner, whoever it is, you need to listen to what they're actually saying. You know, they're giving you the gift of communication and of language and the gift of true emotion and feeling that they're feeling on the inside. So you should value that and listen to it and then respond accordingly and also add in your own feeling. So there's been, you know, with going to school for psychology and just certain life lessons throughout my life, I I believe I've learned, I can still learn, of course, more, but I've, I believe I've learned a lot so far in that sense. And I kind of gained this passion when it comes to interpersonal relationships, because it's so crucial, whether it's for your job or, you know, to build a family with someone or yeah, to have long lasting friendships over the years. Wow. Like it's so crazy. I mean, I haven't known you long, but um, the, th the content that you put out and the energy that I feel from you, I would have never said that you were a poor a communicator a couple of years back and it's so remarkable how far you got and how how much you can reflect about it um you always have to be careful to not like feel like punish yourself too much for how you behaved back then because your baby brain your your youthful brain was just yeah like squished or, or marked so much by the environment and you were able like to get yourself out of that um, more toxic dynamic. Um, and now when you think of the people that you might have hurt and, and that you're maybe not in contact anymore, did you ever think about reconnecting and, and maybe talking about this? Um, or 
are they just not in your life anymore? It yes and no. <laughs> it's a mix. It it's it really depends on the individual. There are a few of them that I have reconnected with. Some yeah. are friends of mine again today, which I'm very thankful for. Some I feel like the minimum goal now when it comes to reconnecting with people that maybe you had a hardship with is that you're at least civil with one another, that there's not hatred in your heart towards the other person or vice versa. I really don't want anyone to wait. I feel like to waste time hating me. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like, it, like I, obviously they have the right to feel whichever way they feel. I just feel like it's such a waste to hate on me because I don't, I'm not, I'm not worth the energy, <laughs> honestly, to them. Like, I'm not like, they, like you can do so many better things and, and vice versa. I don't need to hate on certain people because there's different things, there's different things you can do with that time and energy. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn over time. Yeah. But I had a train of thought. I a train, train of thoughts. See, I'm losing it. <laughs> I was on it. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot a second. I was in the moment. <laughs> I was in yeah. the moment. <laughs> no problem. But, with reconnecting, there are, unfortunately, there are some people that we, that didn't want to talk to me again, and which they have that right to do. I can actually, um, I was mad at first. I'd be upset at first about it, but then I realized they have the right to feel that way. There was some awful thing, like the things that I had said were pretty awful to the sense that, yeah, they have a right to not want me in their life. That's perfectly okay. And, and if there's, and there's certain, there's a few people that I've known in my lifetime that I don't need to hate, but I don't need to talk to them again, or I don't need to let them back in to my like bubble or in my circle. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that's a tough spot to be in because you want to apologize so much and explain yourself and, and help the other to like get over it. But yeah, sometimes people don't want to reconnect and then you got to accept it and you have to forgive yourself and not punish you more and, and just move on. But I think it's beautiful and very like courageous to go and, and see, Hey, can I reconnect with you? Can I, can we just, get over this together and, and not live in resentment and become bitter people. Um, that's like, especially in romantic relationships, I feel it's, but also friendships, it's important because there was a time where you had something special and intimate and yeah, it got broken up and some, some wounds still hurt years later. Um, yeah. How is yeah, it? There was yeah. one, there was, sorry, there was one specific, I do think of someone where I, you know, I had apologized probably 30, 40 different times trying to like reconnect because yeah, the hurt being so bad or like missing them and wanting them. And I learned that you can't, you can't force that on the other person. If they don't, they just didn't want to reconnect in that way, or they felt like they had already tried enough times with me and yeah and I agree with you that it's really it's tough to accept that or it's or it's tough to I used to always believe that we needed closure which is why I would reach out to other people and then actually what I learned sometime last year someone had given me really great advice that closure can be found within yourself and I remember that I was like wow that that's very powerful. Like it really does. It reminded me of how powerful we, all of us are as human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember like, it's the most painful situation to experience when you feel like there's no closure and you can't reach the other person. And now you have to run around half broken for the rest of your life. And, and then I, I got received like similar advice and, yeah, it, it frees you from that, from a burden even, and, and from that mission to having to connect with that person and gives you peace again. And yeah, what would you say are the things that 
you're still learning today or you want to get better at when it comes to relationships um, or friendships. Like we're all like a process, a work in process. Um, I will share what, what I feel I still need to learn, but uh, if you want to go first, what are the things that you feel you need to get better at? You, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sometimes I'm still scared to speak my truth, um, to experience rejection from a person that I deeply love um, because they might not be okay with my truth. Um, I'm a very like loving and caring person at the same time I love my freedom and I love to travel and explore and sometimes I find it hard to communicate like to to allow my my free spirit to be present as well because I feel in a committed relationship uh, you should feel restricted so it's also my my view on relationships um, that they have to feel like you're handcuffed, uh, which is wrong. And uh, yeah, because I think it's because I observed with my parents and my grandparents and maybe friends that are married that this is just how relationships work. You have to give up your your free spiritual uh, like. Um, explore a side and, and be in the kitchen and, and do the relationship duties. And um, that's not good because I restrict myself and I might be restricting my partner as well. And in speaking my truth and my desires, I could uh, maybe have more fulfilling um, relationships. Uh, so yeah, that's for me the, the toughest part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've also witnessed from certain relationships too, at least with romantic ones, this belief that once you get with someone, you have to like almost cut off like your family or your friends, like you can't talk, like you can't really hang out with your friends as much as you used to. You have to put all your time into your partner or all your time and energy and almost make like romantic relationships more important than friendships when both types of relationships relationships are important mm -hmm. so that's that's definitely a lesson I like to remind myself and try not to do to my friends or just other people in general one thing I can think of it sounds a little it's gonna sound a little weird that I think I still could use some work on is is, is taking my own advice <laughs> at times I don't always take it I can say it to other people, but do I always apply it? No, <laughs> I don't. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. So one, like one example being, I'm I am a firm believer in, and I'll and I'll preach this that you and your romantic partner should live your own. Like you should obviously build a life together, but you also still need your own separate lives. Like you go into the relationship with different interests different lifestyles and that's okay to like still have some of your own passions that aren't related to your partner so you can still live an independent life and I I can recognize that when I sometimes when I go into relationships it's happened a lot where I'm like that at the beginning and then I start forming with them I start like my I start getting glued to the other person, I start doing all the things that they like to do. And I start becoming a part of their passions. And then they start getting annoyed and kind of for good reason. Sometimes we need space from mm -hmm. our partners. We need to do our own thing. I stopped, for example, I love to write and I would just stop all my writing. I didn't need to stop, but I just would because it wasn't their interest, but it was mine. And I would start losing my own self-identity. So that's something probably even to this day that I can continue working on. Mm, yeah, that's such a good one. And I feel a lot of people who are like compassionate and, and true lovers, you know, um, yeah. we do that. We tend to do that because we want to be close to the other person. And we also want to learn new things. We're very curious 
and are like, oh yeah, I can write later, but I want to learn like tennis now or, you know, to ride a unicorn. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's very tricky because I can feel that you're also the kind of person who would feel selfish. Like you would feel selfish to, to tell your new partner, no, like today I'm going to write uh, for three hours and you can go uh, <laughs> do something else. Um, it's it's a fine line of, of not feeling guilty about it as well. And it is also the thing that after a breakup, um, we have to um, find again. Like it makes a breakup so much harder when you lost yourself along the way and you totally glued into one person. And then the breakup happens and... <laughs> You're like, oh my God, who am I? I'm just existing with my partner. And um, I know all these things in my mind, but when I'm in there, when I'm passionate and caring again, then I throw it all overboard. And uh, it's it's good to talk about these things with you because <laughs> then you can kind of hold each other um, accountable. Um, when it comes to your parents like you mentioned your uh, family at the beginning and that you kind of grew out of toxic um, dynamics but you sound like you still have a really good relationship with them how did your relationship with your parents change um, as you changed was it difficult at first were they like wow you're kind of betraying us a little bit or, or did you try to like teach them what you are learning and they resisted to it or they were open to listen. Um, what was your experience with your, and it doesn't have to be parents, excuse me. It can be like your, your core family. Sometimes it's not necessarily the parents, um, but maybe it is in your case. That is a great question. It's also a very tough question to answer. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't get into family too much. Okay. Even saying what I said before was really getting, was starting to get personal. I kind of tend to avoid them on my own platform, Okay, but I'm on your platform. I'm here and I'm going to give, I'm going to give you the goods. <laughs> with <it>. So, <laughs> so we can, we can start with parents. So, well, my dad, it'd be really quick. I almost have no relationship with him. And mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't even really know. Of, I didn't even really know anything about him for some time. And I've only met him once my entire life when I was 17. It's the only time I ever saw him in person. There, There's a lot of backstory with all of that too. But Unfortunately, you know, it just wasn't the best dynamic for him and I to continue communicating. And I needed to, I had to learn that hard lesson that they always say blood is thicker than water, yeah. but I don't always believe that is the case. Like, I think it, you have to really look at the individual and I'm like, just because he's my biological father, it doesn't mean he's been my father that's actually been there for me. So so yeah, that that's quick. Like there's just not really any communication and any communication that has been there. It really just has been wishy-washy with my mom. I, she pretty much raised me on her own. It's also, that whole situation is very complicated because I love her. I love her to death, but our communication, we're so, the issue is, well, two things. One, we're very similar so you're going to have like that clash of people of two people who get annoyed by the same things yet the second issue is we is obviously we know each other's to the point that we know how to push each other's buttons and once you figure out someone's big red button <laughs> someone else's and you have that power to push it that's when it can get ugly at times and we've we've had a back and forth of being really good and then being really bad and Today, it's better. It's mm -hmm. getting better. I think one thing we learned is, especially me becoming an adult, we just couldn't live together anymore. I think that kind of happens with a lot of parents and their kids. It's like the kid wants to, you know, be an adult now and not be called like the 20-something-year-old kid or the 36-something-year-old kid. It's like they want to be able to 
fly out of the nest. And my mom is very, I was her only child, only son. So very, very overprotective of me. That took a lot of time and communication to get through and figure and, you know, let on my end, let her know, Hey, I, I need to go out and be an adult. And I think she knew that deep down just was afraid something bad would happen to me or didn't want me to get hurt when in reality I have to get hurt in order to learn, Mm. which sucks. But I feel like it just needs to happen. We need to go. We can't just always have positive experiences. Bad things are going to happen. People are going to pass away someday. um, Just, yeah, certain tragedies, certain don't like weather related so like any natural disasters i mean like any like anything can really happen that's bad that we don't have control over so so yeah it so our communication was very up and down because i felt like i felt like my communication was growing and that she kind of was more stagnant but i also don't i mean she's the only one that's going to really be able to identify what her communication style is I just that's just something I felt with her whenever I would talk to her that communication could be difficult other other family members I mean yeah I to be like to be honest I I'm close to my family but not close to my family which probably doesn't make any sense and <laughs> maybe it makes some sense mm-hmm. but it's like I'm I'm close to them in the sense that I've spent like a certain amount of time with them, but then I'm not close in the sense that we really haven't had much communication with one another. I was one of the younger family members. So I think I was always viewed as the one of the children in the family. And even when I became an adult, they still wouldn't talk to me like I was an adult or they would hide certain things from me mm-hmm. in fear that like I would get hurt. So Mm -hmm. that was something that we've been needing to work on in the process of like, Hey, I'm, I'm an adult (laughs) now. Like I can handle any, like, for example, when I, when I was only like 10, 11 years old, my uncle was only 30 years old and he got in a car accident and died. So that was something that they, they actually, they told me he passed, but didn't like, I, didn't go to the wake or the funeral or I like, they just never really talked about him again to me. It was just kind of like, they told me that one time and then they didn't really want me to actually like accept the death when it's like, you kind of need to like, yeah, it's tough as a child. It's tough for at, at, at any age to deal with losing a loved one, but it's like, you need to, you have to go through that process of what is it? The five stages of grief or whatever your process is. You have to go through that in order to, so that other situations aren't nearly as difficult. So it's not, it doesn't feel life ending every single time Mm. you lose someone. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of like, I guess that's in a gist, the communication between me and, and family, I think for the most part. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, so it sounds like you are close, but you're not maybe seeking approval when you make a big decision like starting a podcast or writing a book, you just do it because you know it's what you are desiring to do and and you will share with them along the way, but you will not like be codependent and and wanting to know that they are on board. Did I get that right? Yeah, I, I think you did. I, I think, and I, I also think they knew me so well as a child, but mm-hmm. then never really got to know me as an adult. Yeah. And then there, and on my end, because I can't, re- I can't really speak how they feel about me at the end of the day, I could assume, but I don't really know fully. But on my end, there is some sort of, I can admit there's some sort of mistrust with family members that kind of, pr- that also hinders my communication with them compared to like best friends where I probably have a healthier level of communication. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds uh, pretty like common that a lot of people find like true family in their friends and, and they're still connected to their family, but a little bit on a healthy distance and uh, that's okay as well, man. 
we're coming to an end here. I'm looking at the clock. It's like 37 minutes. <laughs> wow. Uh, it felt like 10 minutes. I have so many more questions. Maybe we can do that again soon. Um, I would love you to share where people can find you if they uh, got curious about you. Uh, Let Me Be Frank podcast on all the platforms that you can imagine. Uh, your book, how far are you into writing your book? When When is it uh, time for us to have a peek at it? <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was farther. I'm starting to get better with trying to the problem is once I stop writing I sometimes can't get back on the train so I realized mm -hmm. I got to write a little bit every day yes. even if it's like a hundred words it's not a whole lot but it's something it's just getting something on paper <laughs> that I need to keep up with because if I go if I go like three or more days in a row I'm probably not going back to the piece or it'll be a long time so yeah. I've so honestly I only have like I don't have much of a manuscript, maybe like 30 something pages at the moment, but my goal was to try to finish the manuscript this year, but yeah. we'll see. I really, that's a minimum goal and I want to try to do more. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. I'll keep everyone updated on that. Cool. And then my social media is, I'll try to keep it kind of simple to explain because I go by two different names on social media. So for example, my podcast, Instagram, and my Twitter are at let me be frank pod mm -hmm. and then my personal instagram and my tiktok are frank anthony books and then i have a website www.frankanthonybooks.com and like you had said to the podcast yeah is on spotify apple podcasts podbean and a ton of other different <laughs> streaming services very very cool well thank you so much for being here with us today it was such a pleasure to meet with you in person again i mean Thank zoom so is the, what we have right now and um yeah i will make sure to connect people with you and i'm excited for your upcoming episodes thank you for being here thank you so much aurora thank you so much for listening to this interview i hope you got a lot of value out of it and Yeah, make your own conclusions. My biggest conclusion here is it is so important to reflect about how we behaved in the past, how we communicated, and to think about how we can do things better in the future and reconnect with people that we have lost along the way and be okay with people not wanting to reconnect with us anymore. Take really good care of yourself. Thanks for subscribing and maybe leaving me a rating on Apple Podcast. I will be out there very soon again. Bye-bye, Aurora.